so let us start i welcome all the participants and judges in this poster presentation session let us introduce our judges sri asen acharya and dr lalit vashne i will introduce briefly dr uh, sri asen acharya after graduating from the 28th batch of brc training school sri s acharya joined the plasma physics division in the initial years he developed some spectroscopic diagnostics for reb plasma interaction studies he designed and developed induction cavities consisting of matte glass cores for a repetitive pulse power system since, since 1994 till the end of his career he was intimately involved in the design and development of indigenous electron accelerators his area of expertise included beam optics scanning system exit window and beam characterization he played a key role in the demonstrating the potential of this accelerator in flue gas and waste water treatment he was responsible for machine and human safety for appds accelerator facilities at brit washi and ebc kharger apart from r and d activities he was a faculty member in the training school on pulse power system and industrial electron accelerators i welcome sri acharya sir please take a seat dr lalit vashne presently is rrf at electron beam center kharger and senior professor hbni he is former outstanding scientist and head radiation technology development division and retired in 2019 he is msc and phd and joined brc training school in the 25th batch and and joined isotope group brc in 1982 his area of expertise include radiation technology applications in healthcare environment and industry he has more than 145 publications in peer reviewed journals four patents five technology transfers he is currently chairman brns wwm committee bombay textile research association and sri ram industrial research institute he has received national award on polymeric materials indian nuclear science award brc technical excellence award and three group achievement awards he has noted contribution his noted contributions include radiation sterilization of medical products and pharmaceuticals hydrogel hydrogel wound tracings technology patented wastewater treatment technology for dyes and toxic metals cesium extraction from nuclear waste technology which is us patent sewage sludge treatment technology ahmedabad and indore facility based and electron beam treatment of effluents i welcome dr lalit vashne sir please take a seat and uh, just the this session
हेलो हेलो बोलो हेलो हेलो सो शुड बी स्टार्ट द सेशन टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम आ गया ये ऐसा नहीं हूं जी तो आ रही थी आप लोग आ रहे हैं हम म्यूट कीजिए म्यूट कीजिए हेलो 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 सो लेट अस स्टार्ट सॉरी फॉर द इनकन्वीनियंस वी आर हैविंग सम इश्यूज सो फर्स्ट पोस्टर विल बी फ्रॉम श्वेता राय फ्रॉम बी आर सी एंड हर पोस्टर आई डी इज इलेवन फिफ्टी एच now over to swetha rai and the presentation will be for 3 minutes and 1 uh, minute for question and answers your team your time starts now okay uh, good morning but i cannot see my presentation presentation swetha rai 158 yeah good morning everyone i am going to present on the separation of multi packing in single spoke resonator for mehipa 1 mehipa 1 is the first phase of a medium energy high intensity proton accelerator proposed at wizag mehipa 1 is a 40 mev linac layout of which is shown here it consists of rfq dtl and ssr b single spoke resonator cavities which will accelerate proton beam up to 40 mev the single spoke resonator cavities uh, the design of uh, these cavities uh, cavity will be uh, talked about in this uh, presentation and the, the single spoke resonator cavity accelerate the proton beam from 9 to 40 mev and it has been designed at a geometric beta of 0.21 please change these ssr cavities are prone to multi packing and uh, the sites of multi packing are highlighted in red in the first figure as you can uh, see here we have proposed to increase the end wall curvature so as to uh, reduce the multi packing at higher gradients because by increasing the curvature the local magnetic field is increased at that site which also increases the emitted electron energy and the, uh, and so the electrons cannot form stable resonance trajectories at higher gradients the design criteria for uh, the electromagnetic design is to keep the uh, peak surface uh, electric and magnetic field as low as possible and to maxim maximize r by q and g of the cavity the geometry parameters of the cavity are shown in the figure uh, lower figure these parameters are optimized to obtain the uh, optimized uh, cavity please change we have performed electromagnetic design of three ssr cavities at geometric beta of 0.21 and uh, two are conventional ssr cavities and you can see the first one with a blend radius of 0.25 cent uh, sorry 2.5 cm second with 4 cm and the third is a balloon shaped resonator which is well known to reduce the multi packing effects but as can be seen in the uh, table of parameters the accelerating gradient supported by the balloon spoke resonator is the minimum 7.9 because the peak surface magnetic field is the largest for for this your time is over ma'am so let us this session is open for question and answer for one minutes judges and online present participant can ask us questions ho gaya na shweta thank you for the presentation my question is in order to reduce multi packing 
Yes. You have increased the end wall blend radius. Yes. yes. Does it adversely affect uh, parameters like Q value, etc.? No, uh, this this is a local change. So uh, local geometry is changed. So it will not affect the Q value. In fact, if you increase the curvature, you are uh, increasing the volume to surface ratio. So which means the power dissipation will be less for a given stored energy. So that way, actually, Q will also uh, will be or better improved by the, doing this. Okay, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you Jeta. So let us move to the next poster. From Narugo Nayak and his poster is 1159. Can you present or Yeah, shall I present? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, is it visible? My yeah, is it just visible? one minute. You will see more. Up and down. Or up. Fine. We will not need to do that. Okay. Okay, we are sharing from here. You have to just present it. Okay. Okay, you can start. Your time is up now. Okay. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, organizer and judges. Uh, this is Nadugopal Naik. Uh, uh, the topic of my presentation is design and development of high power s band three foot circulator jointly authored by nik uh, nik uh, manoj patangari and dr p tiwari next slide uh, first introduction uh, circulator is a passive non reciprocal three or four port device uh, in which rf wave entering at a port is transmitted to the next port not in vice versa uh, uh, say uh, the transmission is from port 1 to port 2 port 2 to port 3 but not port 3 to port 2 like that so it is a very useful uh, high power passive devices and we have developed a S band circulator for uh, linear accelerator application. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, this is the developed circulator. As you can see, uh, the whole uh, circulator we have designed in CST micro studio. This is the simulated result. You can see uh, it's a three port device and all the nine S parameters are mutually agreed uh, are uh, giving very optimum uh, result at a particular <laughs> frequency of operation 2.856 gigahertz. So all the S parameters like return loss, insertion loss and uh, uh, isolation uh, all are uh, optimized. Insertion lo loss is uh, less than 0.1 dB uh, whereas the isolation and uh, return loss is more than 40 dB at the frequency of interest. And we have, uh, uh, based on the design, we have fabricated the parts. We clean, uh, clean the parts. Uh, we do the uh, 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 degreasing and acid cleaning operation. Then we do the furnace brazing in hydrogen furnace. And we uh, uh, keep the uh, provision for uh, uh, putting the magnet and pull pieces to give the uh, magnetic field required for the circulator. There are cooling channels as well. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, this is the sectional view of the circulator. You can see uh, two magnets are there, two ferrites here, and there is a cooling channel, cooling inlet, and this will go this way, and it will cool the ferrites, which will absorb the heat while uh, high power operation. We uh, did uh, some thermal analysis also, but the results uh, due to uh, insufficient time, we were not able to uh, 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 present those. And this is the experimental experimenter. We uh, get very good uh, experimental response of the circulator. That is uh, the uh, heat unlock and uh, uh, return loss and isolation is more than 35 dB and uh, insertion loss we are getting less than uh, 0.2 dB. So this is very uh, considered uh, consider to be very good results uh, for a high power circulator. Uh, next slide. Mr. Nayak, so, over now. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Nayak, your time is over now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nayak, thank, thank you for the presentation. I have one question. Yeah. Suppose we have got a 10 MeV, 10 kilowatt Linux. 
Hmm. If you are having a circulator for this, what is the imported cost? Uh, imported cost, uh, uh, if it is a 10 kilowatt circulator, it may be around uh, 20 lakh. Uh, how much it, it will be reduced by your development? Uh, by development, you see, uh, this circulator, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, within uh, 5 to 7 lakhs, uh, a development cost will be more uh, less than 3 lakhs. So you have simulated and afterwards developed also, no? Yeah, we have developed and uh, we did some high power characterization also. Low power uh, is already done. And high what power, power level you tested it? Uh, we have uh, tested up to three uh, three kilowatt average power. Okay, thank you. And three megawatt three power. Okay, okay. thank you, Nayati. Now, now next presentation will be from Agul Sarul Sinde from KIFR. His ID number is eleven sixty eight. Now, Jyoti, you can start. What time is now? Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, uh, operational experience of high temperature vacuum furnace, which is installed at uh, TIFR. Uh, mainly, all we know, fabrication of superconducting resonator cavities involves many mechanical processes. And it so is it's all it's Can you increase the sound, please? Bring your mouth close to. Okay. Am I audible now, sir? Yes. yes. Yeah, so uh, sorry, sir. Fabrication of superconducting resonators cavities involves many mechanical processes which uh, can introduce the impedance and stress into this material. Uh, so, it is important to release the stress and remove submerged gas molecules from the resonator cavity. For that purpose, uh, one custom built so bottom loading vacuum furnace was installed. And is more loudly. Hello, hello, am I audible, sir? Please go on. Yes, go on, go on. yes, sir. So, one custom built bottom uh, loading vacuum furnace is installed at uh, PLF Mumbai, and this is designed to operate 1200 degrees Celsius in ultra high vacuum with a base vacuum of 10 to minus 6 millibar. And this furnace has a vertical hot zone of 600 mm diameter and 1 meter height, and with a loading capacity of 100 kg. And uh, this is used for the heat treatment for the purpose of low beta and aluminum cavities wave resonator. And one of the special features of this furnace is heat shield has been designed to achieve maximum uh, temperature at the modest power of uh, 20 kilowatt. There are 14 shields uh, in all. And additional residual gas analyzer is uh, installed in the system just to measure a partial pressure of uh, various wow. uh, gases during the heat treatment. So next slide. As we all know, uh, the hydrogen gas dissolved in the stainless steel during the production of furnace and vacuum components is the largest contributor to outgassing uh, rate of stainless steel. So, excessive outgassing of hydrogen and nitrogen can uh, adversely affect the performance of uh, SRF cavities. Hence, the uh, hydrogen uh, outgassing is a critical parameter. Therefore, the trials have been carried out uh, at the no load condition, uh, SS components in IBM sheet to specifically understand the hydrogen uh, outgassing load. And uh, partial pressure of hydrogen and the other residual gases is measured with the uh, help of RGS. So, next slide. So, these are some, I mean, uh, measurement of partial pressure of hydrogen and uh, uh, furnace vacuum at particular temperature. Uh, so, we have tested job up to 400 degree Celsius and uh, an IBM sheet up to 600 degree Celsius. The, uh, we uh, hold that temperature for more than 40 hours for SS. And uh, uh, the partial pressure that we achieved at the temperature is 6.4 into 10 to the minus 6 millibar. Uh, during the production of stainless steel, large amount of hydrogen is dissolved in the bulk material, and the post process uh, treatment is essential to reduce the hydrogen concentration. As far as we know, for untreated 300 series stainless steel, atomic hydrogen concentration is in the order of 10 to uh, 19 per centimeter cube, corresponding to the partial pressure of 4.1 uh, to 10 to the now let's open the session for questions. Mr. Ognas, thank you for the presentation. I have one question. The, you have written your abstract that uh, it was custom built for you. No standard available uh, no furnace was suitable for you. So what are the features that you have incorporated in this custom built thing? Basically, uh, uh, the uh, easily available heat elements were uh, Kunthal, uh, the commercial name is Kunthal, and it was uh, making powder. So, uh, we this uh, furnace is specially means for treating niobium uh, uh, superconducting resonating cavities. And after uh, 
few cycles that uh, element was uh, making some powders and which can also affect uh, or uh, increases contamination into resin dust. So we have uh, gone through uh, the lanthanide uh, molybdenum uh, heat element. Now we have to move to the okay. 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 okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Okay, now our next poster, poster will be from Monica Pogart from ERC. Uh, poster ID is 1170. Now over to Monica Pogart. Hello, uh, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, Hello, uh, a very good morning to all. Today I am presenting a study of quadruple asymmetry effect in SSRB for MIGPA 1. Your sound is not audible. Hello. Am I audible now? No, again, a little more. Hello. It's okay. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, a 10 milliampere 40 MeV medium energy high intensity proton accelerator is being proposed for medical and multi research applications at YZ. Mm -hmm. As uh, Sweta Mem has briefly explained about MIHIPA 1, which will be consist of ECR ion source, radio frequency quadruple, drift tube LINAC, a superconducting single spoke regenerator sections. So, due to the presence of inner spoke conductor, SSR structure do not possess as azimuthal symmetry along the beam axis. This makes the RF defocusing asymmetric in the two transverse directions and does the beam particle experience a defocusing quadruple com component. So we need to ensure that this quadruple asymmetry is not significant and beam remains largely confined. So next slide, please. To start with, our first step was to import electric and magnetic fields from CST microwave studio in transverse X and Y directions with Z axis as the cavity axis. So these fields have been imported for an offset equal to 10 mm from the cavity axis. So next step was to calculate the transverse momentum kick in X and Y with the help of Lorentz force equation for uh, full particle energy range from 9 to 40 MeV. So now in this in these equations, there are two terms, electric field term and magnetic field term. So we can individually find each field contributions and then net momentum kick in X and Y can be calculated. So we here we had shown uh, both electric and magnetic field contributions. Next slide, please. With these transverse momentum kick, we can define quadruple asymmetry parameter as uh, different in as difference in transverse momentum to an average uniform radial kick. So this quadruple uh, parameter amplitude was less than 0.14 for the full particle energy range, but this parameter in itself does not carry any information about higher order multipole amplitudes for that we need to perform multiple analysis for an radial momentum kick which can be obtained by scanning full xy plane for a fixed radial offset for a optimum beta so this radial kick found to be periodic and it's for multiple amplitude so we observed that quadruple amplitude was the largest among the calculated ones next slide please Further to check the asymmetry effect on beam dynamics, we have performed a beam dynamic simulation in Tracewind with a Six Sigma input uh, symmetric Gaussian distribution. And we observed that beam remains largely confined and also emittance growth in transverse as well as in uh, longitudinal growth was insignificant. So we can conclude that uh, uh, emittance growth was insignificant and beam uh, may not uh, face any kind of uh, beam, degrade beam degradation due to this kind of asymmetry. Thank you. Okay, okay. now question, uh, question, please. Thank you, Monica. I have one question. See, the asymmetry in uh, quadruples uh, will affect your beam, but this asymmetry will mainly arise from uh, fabrications, isn't it? It is due to the structure, due to the presence of that uh, spoke that we have. No, placed. what I am telling before introducing these asymmetries in your simulation. Yes, Did sir. you uh, talk to the fabrication people where they will encounter the most of the difficulty and may not satisfy the ideal criteria? Actually, uh, sir, uh, it's from the design uh, point of view, this asymmetry arise. So if we slightly change the design, then this asymmetry may change. So uh, we, in, like Shweta Mem has already talked about different kind of designs. So in that way, that's whatever final design we have optimized for that, particular we have calculated this asymmetry which was quite less in our case and also it doesn't affect any kind of particle dynamics for in that we have observed in tracewind also but if we slightly change spoke diameter or anything else then this asymmetry obviously may change so it may increase okay. or it may decrease okay thank you thank you 
Okay, thank you, Monica. Now we will move to the next poster. We will do from NIT Agarthala. Poster ID is जोड़ने Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So my poster is uh, for the work of the thin film deposition like alumina thin film on RFM steel by using the RF magnetron sputtering. The next slide. Next slide, sir. Yes. Because of the extreme properties like high thermal conductivity and chemical stability, high electrically insulating in nature. Alumina has got the uh, many application in the area of the corrosion resistance coating. So alumina have very high dielectric materials. So for that depositing the alumina thin film, we have used the RF magnetron sputtering system. We deposited the one micron thick alumina film on RFM steel. Next slide, sir. To get the characterization that uh, whether we have achieved the uh, stratometric alumina we have done the characterization by xps and we get that we get that the peak of uh, 74.5 electron volt that is uh, because of the aluminum of alumina thin film and uh, also there was no peak around that uh, 72.5 electron volt that is pure metallic aluminum so we can say that our coating was the free from the metallic aluminum and it was completely alumina film so for that and also we have calculated that uh, stratigraphy from the xps and we got the stratometry around uh, 1.6 that is uh, nearby the uh, AL203 stratometry. Then uh, after that uh, to characterize uh, that uh, corrosion properties, we have tested that material, uh, tested the coating in 3.5% NaCl. And for that potentiodynamic polarization curve, you can see that uh, the coated substrate has got the uh, higher value of uh, Corrosion potential of five minus five fifty seven millivolt as compared to the uncoated substrate, and we have calculated that corrosion potential, corrosion current density, corrosion uh, protective efficiency, and the porosity of the coating. So from the chart you can see that the coating was very compact in nature because of the porosity was point zero zero point zero four percent, and the efficiency was the protective efficiency against the medium was ninety three percent. And the corrosion rate also, you can see that the uh, alumina coated substrate got the 1.6 micron per year as compared to the bare substrate of 24.8 micron per year. Next slide. Okay, now let us we are it over now. Let us have a question, please. Satish Ji, for your presentation, can you tell me what is the thickness uniformity throughout the your sample? So, one micron thickness. It was. Like one micron is the thickness of the film. Yes, sir. And is there? Do you know the uniformity? I mean, plus minus something. Uniformity, I haven't checked, sir, because uh, because for measuring the thickness, no, we do the masking the substrate, and we take the five to ten reading uh, okay. across the masking. So we got the approximately one one point zero five micron coating for the eight to ten reading. Sure. Okay, so now you should measure standard deviation also. If you take 5, 8 to 10 places, just see the standard deviation. So, 
you cannot have one micron perfect one micron plus minus something yes yes sir, yes, sir. okay sir thank you Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Satish. And now we have to move to the next presentation by Sobhna Mishra. Poster ID eleven seventy seven. Over to Sobhna Mishra. Good morning, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes. 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 This is Shobhna Mishra. I am uh, working in uh, Pulse Power Electromagnetic Division, BRC Vishakhapatnam. Uh, we have been uh, our division is into the uh, various applications of uh, of pulsed power. And one of such application is uh, magnetic pulse welding, uh, which is a solid state joining technique wherein there is no uh, application of heat uh, to join any metals. Like usually in conventional welding techniques, we do apply heat source to melt the materials and let them solidify to get joined. But in magnetic pulse welding, there is no such heat. It is a solid state impact welding. The material is deformed. It gains a velocity and hits a target material to join to uh, establish a mechanical or a metabological joint. So the pr presentation that I'm giving is on titanium to assist joints, sleep proof joints, uh, which is having its application in the dissolver unit of fast breeder reactor purist process. In the purist process, that is a there is a stage, there is a dissolution stage where is the, where the subassembly fuel subassemblies are chopped and are dissolved in uh, nitric acid so that we can extract the plutonium and uranium uh, fuels. Uh, so next slide. Uh, usually when we apply conventional welding techniques to titanium and SS joints, there are certain issues or challenges. Uh, what, what happens is there are brittle inter intermetallics formation and also there is titanium to SS. They have different thermal expansion and thermal conductivity. So they uh, react to temperatures in a different pattern. So when the uh, bond is made with conventional techniques, ultimately at the joints, there are failures seen. Uh, also, titanium alloys are quite chemically active. Uh, when we try to weld it with conventional techniques in a non-inert atmosphere, oxides and nitrides form. So usually that uh, weld part in conventional techniques is a failure part. So what we are trying to do in the magnetic pulse welding your, your is... Time we are over, now, please open for questions. Hello, Shubhna. It yes, is sir. good work. I appreciate that. But uh, where is the role of vacuum in your work? Yes, sir. Uh, in the uh, the vacuum comes in the very first weld qualification is what we do is helium leak test of the samples. That is the very first evaluation of uh, weld quality that we do for MPW. Uh, and what we have achieved is with uh, MPW techniques, whatever joints we have achieved, we have got a leak helium leak uh, rate of the order of better than 10 to the minus 12 milliliter per uh, bar per uh, second sir just another yes, small question yes, See, sir. this reprocessing work is going on in uh, da for quite some time so they must be using vessels where titanium welded to uh, stainless steel must be done by other method what is the advantage of your method sir titanium dissolver units are uh, are to be coming in the frfcf ig car uh, what they uh, will be doing for fast reactor fuel processing, sir. Okay. Presently, those are not titanium dissolver units, sir. But in uh, FRFCF, there will be titanium, but the entire vessel need not be titanium. Some joints and all have to be titanium to SS. So for those joints, uh, this is a promising uh, solid state uh, joining technique, sir. Okay. Okay, okay Kupna, thank you. Now we will move to the next presentation by Mr. Arvin, and his poster ID is 1179. Now over to Arvind. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Arvind from uh, Pulse Power and Electromagnets Division, uh, BRC Vishakapatnam, sir. My topic of presentation is magnetic pulse welding of aluminum, aluminum, two plug and joint uh, qualification. Coming to my title, I'll first explain my title. What is welding? Welding is a process of joining two metals by application of heat or uh, pressure or uh, filler materials or uh, simultaneous of any of these combinations. Uh, the, uh, here uh, we are in magnetic pulse welding, it is pressure welding, whereby we are applying the pressure by using magnetic force in the form of Lorentz force and the pulse, uh, it is pulse, the reason being is we are applying the pressure in the duration of microseconds, thereby the name magnetic pulse welding. Here I am doing for, uh, we are trying to establish magnetic pulse welding for aluminum and aluminum combination. Uh, uh, the problem with the conventional te technique when uh, welding aluminum, aluminum is due to its uh, uh, high dermal conductivity, more energy will be required, more heat energy is uh, required and uh, large uh, uh, dermal coefficient of expansion and contraction leading to the cracking. Next slide, sir. 
here uh, here the process uh, can be explained uh, by uh, um, uh, using the lorentz force we we have to uh, weld two metals the one metal will be uh, accelerated towards the other metal by using the uh, lorentz force uh, sir next slide uh, here we can see the experimental setup on the left side we are having a capacitor bank upon which a switch is mounted and the tool coil can be seen uh, this tool coil is used to generate that uh, lorentz force and when we are having the uh, uh, aluminum tube and the uh, target material inside it inside it and the current uh, is discharged this uh, tube will be uh, accelerated towards the target plug and uh, will get welded next slide please sir uh, we have uh, uh, welded a few samples and it was noticed that a good bond a good bonding is achieved when the helium leak test is uh, better than minus in the range of 10 power minus 10 millibar liter per second and this uh, baby pattern is a typical phenomena which occurs in the impact welding like explosive welding and uh, this uh, joint will be qualified uh, for uh, other tests like a tensile uh, uh, test to check the mechanical strength and uh, we are using electron uh, scanning electron microscope to check the Mr. Arvin, your time is over now. Yes, sir. Over. Sir. Now, question please from the judges. Have you contacted any users for this uh, aluminium aluminium welding? Any users are there in the industry? Uh, sir, presently uh, we are in the exploration of a different uh, uh, material combination. So presently we don't have any user for aluminium aluminium, sir. What is the capacitor energy you are using? Sir, presently for this joint, we have used 20 kilojoules, sir. 23 exact. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Arvin. Now we have to move to the next presentation by Mr. Surendra Kumar Sharma from PBED BRC. His poster ID is 1181. Now over to Mr. Surendra Kumar Sharma. Your good time morning. starts now. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have developed a compact portable inertial electrostatic confinement neutron generator here in Wysak and the neutrons are generated, DD fusion neutrons are generated from the source. <laughs> we have used uh, uh, those neutrons for activation analysis of a coal sample. So I'll be presenting that work. Next slide, please. Inertial electrostatic confinement fusion concept is an alternative fusion concept compared to magnetic confinement fusion and inertial electrostatic inertial confinement fusion. In magnetic confinement fusion, we use high magnetic field to confine the plasma uh, to achieve fusion condition. In inertial confinement, we use lasers or shock wave to confine the plasma. But here in this scheme, we are using high electric field to confine the plasma in a uh, region uh, to achieve the fusion condition. So it, this uh, in IEC device, uh, the glow dust, glow discharge, uh, it operates in glow discharge region of the passion curve in which the pro positive ions are moved in a central region wherein high density plasma is achieved. So we have developed uh, uh, spherical and cylindrical geometrical IEC devices. Uh, IEC devices. Uh, so this is a, a cylindrical IEC fuel devices. Center we have a cathode, outside we have an anode. And this was placed in a vacuum of 10 raised to minus 5 milli, millibar, and then deuterium gas in, injected at 0.2 millibar. When we, uh, when, when we had applied a potential of 30 kV, we have generated the neutrons of 10 raised to 5, DD fusion neutrons of 10 raised to 5, that were measured with helium 3 neutron flux, uh, flux monitors. Next slide, please. I have used these neutrons to do the uh, activation analysis of a coal samples. Coal contains, apart from hydrocarbon, sulfur. Uh, chlorine and other uh, elements. So, neutron activation analysis technique can be used to determine the prompt and uh, gamma. We can signature. We can measure the elemental constitution and positions. But if you don't have detector, I have used cesium. Those lithium provide detectors. The detector is calibrated with cobalt and cesium sources. And then uh, we have mm -hmm. done the background counting, uh, thousand second background counting, and when the hundred gram. This coal sample was exposed to the neutrons from the, this IEC neutron source. I have measured the points. I could see some increase in count between one to five MeV, but the exposure time was only two two minutes, and the neutron flux was ten to five. The, the count was not significant, but I am going to increase the neutron flux from ten to five to ten to seven by increasing the voltage. I will increase the quantity of coal. Mr. Surendra, your time is over now. Now, yes. the Next slide, the my case. conclusion, the source was designed and operated. I could get 10 to 5 neutrons. And the activation analysis of coal uh, sample was done with this neutron. Oh, okay. yes, time is over, Mr. Surendra. Now, yes. You have yes. mentioned that it is a 
portable compact source. Yes, sir. What is the size and weight of this? So weight was uh, 10 kg. Uh, length was 450 mm, 45 centimeter. Diameter was 15 centimeter. We are planning to make a very small tube for oil bowl. Is it including the power supply also? So power supply unit is a separate unit. The power supply unit uh, is 5 kg. I have used Spellman power supply. Uh, uh, 80 kV, uh, 10 milliampere power supply because we can use high voltage long distance cable because it's a, say, a simple high voltage power supply. So source okay. is separate, power supply is separate. Sir. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Surendra. Now we have to move to the next presentation by Snigdha Singh from BERC and her poster ID is 1182. Now over to Snigdha. Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. I'll be presenting my work on the design and development of a 24-way splitter for solid state RF power amplifier. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, uh, slide, please. Yeah, so first of all, I'll be uh, describing the uh, overall system and then I'll uh, just point out how and where splitter is used. So actually, as a developmental project, a 20 kilowatt, 325 megahertz solid state power amplifier is being designed and developed at BARC. Now, uh, the power output of an individual MOSFET device, which forms the heart of a solid state amplifier, is actually technologically limited to 2 kilowatts. So if you want to uh, go to higher power, let's say hundreds of kilowatts, then we have to go for a modular technology, wherein we need to combine uh, the output from several such solid state amplifiers to get a total higher power output. So this is the need for a modular technology. It has other advantages as well, such as graceful degradation of power, but I will not get into that. First, uh, in here, I'll show the uh, block diagram of a 20 kilowatt solid state power amplifier. So there's a signal generator, which is nothing but a, a small level RF source. It feeds power into pre-driver and driver, which are high gain, low power amplifiers. The output from the driver amplifier is then divided into 24 parts because here we have 24 number of modules. So it is divided into 24 parts by the one is to 24 splitter. The 24 parts then go to the individual power amplifier modules. The power amplifier modules then amplify this power and then the total power we combine using a 24 is to 1 combiner and feed to a 50 ohm load. So as we can see in this diagram, we, uh, the splitter, it divides the output power from the driver amplifier. So this splitter actually is an indispensable part in a modular high power solid state uh, amplifier. Next slide, please. Yeah. So actually, we have gone for a 24-way modified Wilkinson type splitter uh, for this present application because the quarter-way characteristic impedance of an N-way uh, Wilkinson type splitter, where N is equal to 24 in our present case, since we have uh, 24 number of modules, it comes out to be around 245 ohm for a standard 50 ohm system. Now, if we try to implement this 245 ohm in a single state of transformation, with, where is the in, wherein the input is 50 ohm and the output is 50 ohm, then the track fit that we get is of the order of tens of microns. That track width is actually very thin and impractical for meeting the power handling requirement. So we have gone for a modified design where we first transform the 50 ohm into an intermediate impedance, which gives us a practical width of the uh, track. Nikla, and then the Nikla, your time is over now. So uh, let us have a question from judges. Okay. Thank you, Snigda, for the presentation. Thank you, sir. I was just going through your abstract. Yes, sir. You say that between consecutive ports, Yes, sir. You are not getting uh, proper isolation. So what was the design value and what you are practically getting? So actually the design value was uh, better than 22. But uh, why, uh, when we are uh, experimenting, we find it it's around 17.5 or 18 dB typically. So and that is happening in the adjacent ports only. So we have actually gone for certain mitigation techniques also. Like we have we have like in the practical case, we are making these grounded proper, uh, proper tracks uh, between the two ports to see if there's some improvement. So that is what we are going for. No, currently you have tested only with a VNA, low which power. gives you low power. Yes. Sir, the yes. power level rises again, this isolation may be affected. Am I correct? Uh, no, sir, not really. Actually, we have actually designed certain 8-way power dividers and 22-way power dividers previously also uh, for the other applications. And we have seen that the results at low power are like more or less in consonance at a higher power also. So that will not be a problem. Main thing is that we need to resolve this isolation issue at the uh, VNA level. Okay. 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 Thank you. So now we have to move to the next presentation by uh, Devangan, which was myself. So my time starts now.
my presentation is on the analysis design and development of floating power supply floating transformer for 100 kilowatt dc accelerator next please so in this uh, as we know that in dc accelerator uh, high voltage is generated by the symmetrical cocker of vol uh, voltage multiplier and uh, which convert 45 kv input 10 kilowatt into the 1 million volt dc using 15 stages constant rectifiers and here electron source is situated at 1 million volt terminal which requires some power source for uh, its anode and the gun so here what we have we, what we have done uh, we have used one transformer connected uh, across the ac column of the multiplier column which derive the power for the uh, for the uh, gun power supplies so we have analyzed for the inductance of this transformer next please this is the analysis and simulation results uh, at the left side we can see the uh, some schematic diagram which shows the how we are extracting power from the multiplier column and uh, we are using inductance your transformer and uh, their inductance is optimized by uh, orchid simulation so right side uh, graph shows that uh, voltage build up in the stages we are having 15 number of stages in the high voltage multiplier column and uh, with the stage number uh, and uh, by varying the inductance of the transformer we see that if there is no inductance that means no transformer is connected so uh, that uh, voltage build up will be uniform in all the stages but once we connect some small amount of the inductance let us say 0.5 Hen henry then voltage distribution in the all the stages is uh, completely non uniform uh, sometimes it is about uh, 50 kV and uh, at other st stages it, it will be about 125 kV, so which is which is not uh, uh, desirable. So what we did, we analyzed for the again uh, higher value on the inductance and we found that if it is more than 10 Henry of the inductance, then uh, uniformity will be uh, maintained in the all the stages. And uh, uh, lower portion of the graph shows that uh, what is the effect on the HV terminal voltages. So it shows that if there is no inductance, then HV terminal voltage will remain same at 1000 kV. But once we put the inductance, that induct that voltage is increases to 1.5 times also. So this uh, analysis, uh, based on this analysis, we can connect the inductance value of the uh, absorptable value of inductance across that uh, terminals so that we can get the desired multiplication factor of the multiplier column. So, and the right side shows that the loading effect on the gun power transformer, since we are uh, deriving power from the multiplier column itself. So, by loading the uh, gun power transformer, uh, there could not be the effect on the stage voltages. This shows that if we are deriving the power from multiplier column, that loading effect will not be there and all the stage voltages will remain same. Next, please. This is the based on that uh, simulation analysis, we have designed the transformer with 150 Henry of the inductance and uh, these are the specification sheets. Uh, the, uh, where uh, selection of uh, core, farmers, and insulation is described in these slides. Next, please. These are the results. So after the after uh, designing the transformer with the analysis, uh, we have uh, fabricated transformer and uh, uh, made it. And uh, now photograph shows the transformer is connected at the high voltage terminal. This terminal will be at the one million volt, and uh, that uh, uh, transformer. Uh, across the transformer in the parallel there is inductance which is for the compensating of the okay so i think my time is over now so now let us the session is open for questions thank you very much for your presentation uh, my question is that uh, at the top of your accelerator cockroft walton column you have got the gun and it consists of a cathode and anode so while designing your this power supply, what is the kind of load you assumed? Is it a resistive load or some other kind of load? Uh, with the considering this load, resistive load only, uh, we are testing our uh, transformer and gun power supplies. You have operated the accelerator at 50 kilowatt of power. Yes, sir. So this circuit, how much current it is drawing? This is drawing about... Uh, uh, 60 milliampere of the beam current. This is the DC current. At 850 kV, we have tested. Okay, so even if you go to 100 kilowatt, maybe this will be just doubled. And at 100 kilowatt, it will be uh, 120 milliampere. But and during that 100 kilowatt condition, this energy will be 1000 kV. So current will be only 100 milliampere. So I think my time is over, sir. I think. Okay. Uh, so now we have to let us go to the next slide, uh, next presentation by Mr. Siddiqui. And his poster ID is 1184. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, my name is, I am, am I audible, sir? Yeah. Hello. Uh, am 
I audible, sir? Yes, audible. Okay. Uh, my name is Yubay Siddiqui, and now I am uh, pursuing PhD from Homi Baba National Institute and lab working in a BARC with Shaka Patna. Uh, my work is design, design and development, development of trigger vacuum switch for capacitor discharge application. Next slide, please. Trigger vacuum switch. Trigger vacuum switch is a device for it is a switching device. Uh, it is a high current high current switching device. It is used in a pulse uh, pulse power discharge circuit as a closing switch. Wide range of working voltage. It is used in an electromagnetic launcher. Also, it is used in an electromagnetic pulse welding of two deep similar material and a fast protected device you use. High charge, it is also a high charge transfer property and uh, it's it is but it's a compact structure. Uh, next slide, please. The specification of the TBS is flowing below, uh, flowing below. For the testing of the switch, first we charge the capacitor and discharge, discharge this capacitor uh, through this switch in a in certain certain uh, the rating of the capacitor is 208 microfarad. Uh, and the operating voltage lies between 20 to 30 kV, and the peak current uh, peak current is around 200 kilo ampere. And electrode material is SS, and and the vacuum of the switches is around 10 to the power minus 4 millibar. And the diameter of the switches is 8 centimeter, and the length of the switches is 25 centimeter. Uh, um, the conclusion of the conclusion is the trigger vacuum switch has uh, many advantages over the switches. The, for example, fast re fast recovery, wide range of operating current, 50 to 500 kilo ampere, and voltage is around 10, 10 to 100 kilo volt range. It has ability to survive over voltage, over current, and reverse current for the electrical power system. Thank you, sir. Now, question from the judges. Uh, thank you, Mr. Siddiqui. I have just one question. Yes, sir. What is the recovery time of your this power gap? Uh, uh, around, sir, uh, 10 milliseconds, sir. So it can be operated uh, in a repetitive pulse power system? Uh, yes, sir. We can uh, operate it uh, repeated, sir. Has it got any advantage over magnetic switches? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, it has a mother lower cost and uh, their operating voltage is higher than the sir, other switches. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Siddiqui. Now we have to Thank move you. to the Thank next you, poster by Sachin Gupta and poster ID is 1185. Over to Sachin Gupta. Hello. Good morning. My topic is electron optic design of 12 kilowatt melting machine. Audible? Hello. Yeah, uh, in electron optics design, first we, we have to design electron gun column which consists of electrostatics and electromagnetic lenses. Electrostatic lens generates and transports the electron beam and the, sorry, back, yeah. The, then uh, magnet, electromagnetic lenses use, uh, is used for focusing the beam and uh, aligning the beam at the target. Now, as you can see in the diagram that wire cathode grid and anode comprises of electrostatic lenses and the power supply attached to wire cathode is wire cathode heating power supply which is as which is at minus 15 kV and it is also having a grid voltage of minus 200 volts which is a fixed voltage while the wire cathode heating acceleration and all the other power supplies are in variable mode. Now beam focusing and beam deflection power supplies are low voltage power supplies and uh, now next now we, we can see the requirement of the electron beam on the target so the graph shows that at fifth, at 12 kilowatt we require about 20 to 25 mm beam on the target and at 6 kilowatt we require about 15 to 20 mm uh, beam spot size on the target now uh, moving to next section of the design that is design of filament so the main parameter to choose filament material is to have a long, li long life of the filament. So we have selected tungsten as a material for filament and we have chosen uh, fila spiral filament as a filament, our filament for the gun. 
now for designing an electron uh, electron gun we have started with the pierce geometry so that we can optimize it so we divided it, this electron gun operation into two modes that is up to 6 kilowatt we have some different mode of operation and up to 12 kilowatt we have a, some different of mode of operation so in this what we have done we have changed the anode and grid voltages such that we can obtain the desired parameters on the beam target next please now the when we have done the simulation of that we, we can see that the 12 kilo, kilowatt beam is having more divergence than the 6 kilowatt beam so we have to design an electro start, electromagnetic lens in such a way that both the operations can be fulfilled and the design parameters of the design coil of electrostatic le electromagnetic lens is shown in the figure next please Yes, Sachin, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. See, for all oh, these focusing these... elements in a beam line, uh, you have got standard formulas for focal length and all these things, depending on that ampere turns are calculated. Yeah, right, sir. Uh, similarly, for electrostatic focusing as well. Now, you have done a numerical solution also. Yes, sir. So in your geometry, how much is the deviation from this analytic calculations? Sir, ana yes, sir. Uh, in starting, I told that I am using Pierce gun for the analytical purpose for making our start point. But as we change on modifying, like in analytical geometry in Pierce gun, there is no hole on the anode. But if we introduce anode uh, hole on the anode, then there is no analytical calculation that can be verified. So what I did is for a starting point of my simulation, I had used Pierce geometry to see what is the error which I am getting. That is within 3% of error I was getting. Then after that, I had taken that as a start point and then started making uh, building our uh, electron gun column. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Sachin. Okay. Now we have to move to the next poster uh, presented by Suresh Chandra Sharma from TIFR. And his poster ID is 1180H. Over to Mr. Surendra Sharma. Suresh 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 Chan Sharma. This poster is on gas stripper system, which is uh, installed in uh, Peloton accelerator in terminal section. Uh, this system uh, is used to uh, strip heavy ions, just like chlorium, sulfur, silicon, like that. Uh, actually, uh, due to heavy ion, we are using carbon foil stripper that uh, due to heavy ion that breaks uh, fastly to uh, avoid the oh, this uh, oh, mm, uh, carbon foil stripper li uh, life uh, this uh, gas stripper uh, assembly uh, yeah, system is used which consists of 300 liters variant make uh, uh, turbo pump which is connected uh, in the stripper chamber uh, uh, during the stripping, the nitrogen gas is injected in uh, gas stripper uh, canal, which is of length of uh, 900 uh, millimeter and diameter is uh, 8 mm. During uh, the injection of gas, the uh, particles are stripped and this gas is recirculated through turbo pump. And uh, the whatever vacuum uh, is uh, uh, yes that uh, I am seeing that two variant make uh, 300 liter uh, per second turbo pump is used, and the vacuum inside our. Uh, a beam line is uh, 10 raised to minus 8 minus 9 or order. Uh, 
our accelerator is uh, at uh, ATP SIG pressure. Okay, your time is over now. Now let us have a questions from the judges. Uh, this is a scheme at oh, okay. What is the thickness of the stripping foil? Uh, it is at uh, 3 to 4 milligram per centimeter. What criterion is there to select this thickness? Because uh, that thickness is uh, important for stripping. If the thickness is more, the ions cannot be stripped. Uh, that efficiency of stripping it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Now we have to move to the next uh, presentation by Mr. Pratap Reddy from BERC. His poster ID is 1192. Okay, my, uh, my topic is development of high current ion source for lutetium isotope separation. Uh, I am presenting, but the other others are Dr. K.G. Bhushan, Amitava Roy and uh, Ankur Patel. Next slide, please. The motivation to do this is we want lutetium 177. This is used in uh, 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 radiotherapy. It is a gamma and uh, beta emitter. Lutetium naturally has two isotopes, 175 and 176. The isotopic purity of 176, uh, after increasing the isotopic purity, if it is irradiated with neutron, it will become 177. And that can be used in uh, uh, preparing the uh, uh, radionuclide dr drugs, actually. So uh, traditional methods. Next slide, please. The traditional methods like gas centrifuges cannot be used for the enrichment of lutetium because lutetium do not form volatile compounds like uranium. As we know in uranium, uranium forms uranium hexafluoride that can be enriched in gas centrifuges, but lutetium do not form any volatile compound. So the other methods has to be about, uh, adapted for it, its enrichment. For example, like atomic vaporizer isotope separation or uh, calutron type electromagnetic isotope separation. Here we have adapted electromagnetic isotope separation, which can give 100% enrichment and relatively less expensive compared to Avalis. So here, uh, to in order to uh, separate the ions using electromagnetic isotope separator, we need lutetium ions. In gas centrifuge, we have to make Gaseous, gaseous compounds in electromagnetic isotope separator, we have to make ions of lutetium. So we, next slide please. So in order to make uh, lutetium ions, we have developed a metal vapor vacuum mark ion source. Basically it is a vacuum mark discharge plasma. The underlying principle be behind this metal vapor vacuum mark ion source is vacuum mark dis discharge plasma. And this discharge is generated at 10 raised power of minus seven millibar pressure range. So the ion source, Basically, we will create a uh, electric uh, vacuum arc discharge between cathode and anode, and that cathode is made from the material of interest. Here, the material is lutetium. So, next slide, please. Uh, typically, this is the Meva source uh, principle. So, as it, it is shown in the diagram, that the cathode is the material, and then the uh, a, a vacuum arc discharge is established between cathode and anode. And in order to trigger the arc between cathode and anode, we use a trigger electrode. And this uh, vac uh, subsequently, cathode spots. Are... Your time is over now. Okay. Let us have a question from the judges. Sorry. What is the kind of lutetium ion density you are able to produce in this? We are expecting ion current of the range of few microamperes from this uh, source. That uh, ion charge density at the cathode spot, the ion charge density will be few uh, amperes per uh, centimeter square. Okay. Are you able to uh, produce a usable amount of lutetium 177? Lutetium 177, uh, first we will enrich into 176 for the enrichment. After that, we will irradiate it uh, using thermal neutrons, then produce lutetium 177. Our job here is from the natural elemental composition, uh, enriching 176. Is it being used commercially right now? Commercially mean it is used on it? So far, we are importing right. this uh, lutetium 177. It is our indigenous uh, thing to develop this. Uh -huh. It's still in development stage. Yes. So these are the last slide. These are the important. Slides. We have fabricated the ion source, and this is the electrical system under uh, testing, electrical power supply. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pratap. Thank you. Welcome.
now we have to move to the next presentation by mr p anil kumar his poster id is 1198 mr p anil kumar yes sir good morning uh, am i audible sir yes yes you are audible yeah good morning everyone and good morning sir today uh, myself anil kumar today i would like to present a poster on the title design and particle in cell simulation of high power s band pulse magnetron for linear accelerator system linear particle accelerator system uh, which can accelerate the charged particles or ions to a high speed by subjecting them to a series of oscillating electric potential along a linear uh, beam line so there are different uh, applications of this uh, linear accelerator medical um, linac is uh, used for the radiotherapy in order to treat the cancer cells so uh, 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 it requires a magne uh, it requires a RF source. So, uh, medical linac was designed by um, Samir uh, Mumbai. So, we have uh, uh, placed at various parts of our country. So, magnetron is the one of the uh, RF source, which is uh, 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 and also uh, it is a, uh, a cross field uh, device. Magnetrons are uh, is the youngest from the family of the vacuum tubes, which are operating uh, megahertz to gigahertz frequency and kilowatt to megawatt per hour. Levels. These are very advantages uh, with the high power efficient high power generation high efficiency and the lower cost there are different applications other than this uh, medical uh, field uh, like uh, radar systems and uh, micro heating and uh, non destructive testing uh, next slide please so uh, actually samir gohati has designed a 12 in hole and slot structure with the efficiency of 56% of the power 3.25 megawatt uh, we are planning to uh, enhance the power and uh, efficiency. In order to that, we have designed a 16 vein solar slot structure. You can able to see from the schematic diagram and the single cavity also we have designed based upon the empirical equations which are uh, shown in the slide. Uh, next slide, please. For that design, uh, we have uh, uh, used a CST particle simulation studio in order to design this uh, 16 vein solar slot. So uh, we have designed a cathode uh, and also cathode end heads in order to uh, avoid the um, electrons which was generated between anode and cathode. And also we have used to uh, strapping double type double ring type strapping in order to uh, 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 solve the problem of mode jumping between pi mode and uh, uh, pi minus one mode. And uh, whatever the power which was generated between anode and cathode, we need to extract by using a loop type of coupling. So that uh, type of coupling you could able to see from the uh, uh, figure and also we connected it to the um, uh, antenna and also in order to tune the frequency we have designed a capacitive type uh, uh, frequency tuner you can see capacitive type mechanical frequency tuner in the figure and uh, uh, the operating uh, uh, region of the magnetron based upon the two equations i have shown here that is uh, uh, VOC that is hull cut of uh, voltage parabola and also voltage uh, uh, hull uh, voltage line. Based upon these two equations, uh, we found the operating point of the magnetron. So that is 0 0.191 axial magnetic field and also 55 applied voltage. That applied voltage uh, we have applied between anode and cathode by using the discrete port. Go to the next slide, please. So these are the simulation results after 300 nanoseconds. Mr. Anil Kumar, your time is over now. now yes, sir. These are the results question from the judges. Simulation. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Anil Kumar. Uh, in uh, many of your slides, I saw many analytical formulas and empirical formulas for this design. So yes, where did you actually benefit from this simulation then? I think most of the these formulas you have used in the design. Yes, sir. We have used to, uh, these equations in order to design the uh, magnetron in this uh, CST particle studio simulation, sir. Mm -hmm. So your current uh, anode current is 135 amperes. What is the uh, number of actual particles contained in the macro particle in the simulation? Uh, we have uh, mesh cells, sir, you were asking? No, for this current simulation, you must have uh, assumed some macro particles, no? Some macro particle numbers have to be there, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, how much was that? Uh, how that many was... cells and per cell, how many these actual particles? Uh, per cell, we have considered 10, sir. 10. If you go to 20, did you find any difference? Yes, sir. Simulation will, uh, it will take a lot of uh, uh, time taking process. And, ah, uh, no, it, it may take a lot of time, but you will have to go to the convergence. No, otherwise maybe yes, 10, it will be erroneous. But obviously we have design, we have go to up to 15, sir, but uh, the re result is remain same, sir. Okay. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Anil Kumar. Now thank we have to move to the next presentation by uh, Daily Davis from SK Somaya College, and her poster ID number is eleven ninety nine. Now over to Ms. Daily Davis. electron induced chemistry which plays a major role in variety of natural phenomena starting from interstellar medium and planetary atmosphere to radiation biology due to their ubiquitous presence uh, for that we have to uh, deposit organic thin films in high vacuum condition and low temperature for that we have to measure thickness uh, of the deposited monolayers by an easily available method is very important in calculating the yield of product formed after the irradiation process next slide please for that we have uh, devised a very easy and simple method from the um, uh, deposited film by taking the fourier transform ir spectrum of the deposited film this is calibrated using and if you if you see uh, uh, deposition uh, beam deposition method and from its uh, geometrical factors for example uh, one diameter uh, one mm diameter and one mm aperture are uh, deposited at 10 raised to minus 7 millibar and 12 kelvin uh, we have calculated the uh, thickness uh, 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 assuming unit sticking uh, efficiency and simultaneously we have deposited and took the spec uh, ir spectrum and from the column density and using reflection absorption in infrared uh, spectrum method we have calculated the column density using the equation and is equal to cos theta by 2 that is by because of the reflection and absorption and integration of the spectral band divided by a Einstein coefficient absorption coefficient uh, uh, next slide please this these are the result we, this is the uh, for one uh, deposition of uh, 2 5 norborna diene at uh, around 15 kelvin and 10 raised to minus um, 7 millibar pressure then from the uh, uh, thickness is calculated using a value of the peak at 13 um, 11 centimeter uh, uh, and we have cal calibrated using the fusive beam method and we found that the gas dosage method gave about a factor of two larger thickness and so it, this is very easy method for us Madam, because Madam, your time is over now okay now so we have question from the judges we have found 0.5 intensity is like for 50 monolayers. Okay. Question from the judges, please. Uh, if I understand you correctly, is your this method of calculating this thickness independent of this FTIR? The FTIR is a separate thing? Yes. First, we uh, now we using FTIR, but we calibrated using the effusive beam method. So now it is, we have the probing method for FTIR. So we can directly calculate the thickness from the IR intensity. So, how far was uh, your method in agreement with this FTIR? It is twofold, two larger. I have, we have found that gas dosage method gave about a factor of two larger. Is this unit sticking efficiency assumption correct to what degree? Um, for the Norborna diene, the sticking is very good. That is the literature value is saying. So, um, maybe 10, uh, 10 to 20% is okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, madam. So now we have to move to the next presentation by Mr. Rupesh Kumar Chaudhary. His poster ID number is 102. Mr. Chaudhary, are you online? Okay, I think he is not online, so we can take uh, later. Now we have to move to the next presentation by Mr. Rajiv Sharma from IPR. His poster ID is 1206. Now over to Mr. Rajiv Sharma. Yeah. Mr. Rajiv Sharma, are you online? So am I audible? Yeah, 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 sir. You are audible. Please continue, okay. sir. 
Uh, okay. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, my topic is the vacuum helium titanium and sealing aspect of the high pressure helium vessel, the gas storage vessel at IPR. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. Because I will tell you that uh, <clears throat> this is the helium gas storage tank we have for our helium plant. Uh, around 700, uh, 7,500 meter cube gas of the five grade uh, the helium gas of the um, purity level is less than ppm uh, moisture is 2 ppm and uh, three carbon steel and one stainless steel um, uh, gas storage vessel are there a very high pressure around working operating pressure is 100 more than 100 bar and 14 bar for this our helium plant and helium leak tight is very much important because if there is any leak in any flanges any uh, seal that will create a very huge loss of helium uh, so I will tell you what about the, our how we all perform the helium leak tightness and conditioning of the vessel. Next slide, please. And uh, the, the objective is to ensure the helium leak tightness of the, all the uh, vessel joint. Around 200 joints are there in all helium vessels. Uh, the main thing is the water moisture content is less than 2 ppm because if the moisture content is more, it will create in the our helium turbines in the cold box. It will create a uh, uh, problem there and uh, uh, the moisture in the moisture content, the purification in the gas and it will go in the gas in the magnet. So when the magnet will create a, there in the pro problem, the pressure drop. And the vacuum pressure level, we have to uh, conditioning of the vessel, we have to get minus 2 level. And the dew point measurement is also minus 67.7. After that, we have... Uh, uh, joint leak testing joint of at high pressure of all flanges joint RT joint but uh, leak test uh, next slide please and assurance of moisture level because the assurance of moisture level 2 ppm is very much important in this helium vessels and uh, helium leak tightness has 14 meter height at 100 bar pressure vessel drying conditioning of the dew point measurements is the uh, main important work and the in carburetor we have developed seals and gasket for our 150 and 300 flange uh, and ball wall for this PTF seal uh, for our uh, sealing purpose and identify, we have so many identify the leak from minus 2 to minus 4 uh, to minus 5 millibar liter per second and we have uh, saved the huge amount of helium gas and next slide please. And this is the photograph, this is the RT, RTJ joint, and this is the very high pressure leak testing, this is the all flange joints and the vacuum connection and this dew point measurement and the leak testing at very high pressure. So all this, uh, we, have, we have saved all the helium gases uh, with the, in the vessels of around um, uh, 10 to the power minus 5 meter, we have achieved the minus 5 milliliter per, per second, the helium leak tightness and the assurance of the dew point minus 67 of the helium gas at atmospheric pressure. And uh, now it's working in a good condition. There is no leakage we have found in all uh, joints, ceiling joints at operating pressure around 120 milli, uh, 20 bar gauge pressure. Mr. Raji, your time is over now. Yeah. Okay. Sir, question, please. Uh, as I understand from your talk, we have a very large volume helium storage. Yes. And this leak rate was initially found to be 10 raised to the power minus 2 yes. millibar liter per second. So if it had gone on at this rate, maybe say in one year, can you give an estimate of the helium that you would have lost? Yeah, because it's a minus two, less than so bubble, less than so bubble, uh, this uh, leak to say one cc per second, I think. If you calculate the very huge amount of millimeter cube, meter cube gas uh, loss will be there. Uh, one cc, I think uh, this is the uh, one cc per second in the minus two, three level of helium leak tightness. If you calculate by the tank volume of the 7,500 meter cube in one one second like this and multiply by 24 hours in 65, you get a very huge amount of helium leak gas. And minus five, it is very uh, acceptable because one cc in the one week, I think, uh, okay. per second. Uh, suppose your this um, you know, water vapor content that goes yeah. beyond two ppm. Yes. Then what do you do? Because we are measuring the dew point measurement uh, the, of the. Uh, you are uh, measuring, but suppose the dew point has deteriorated. In that case, so what do you do? We purify the gas. Uh, we measure at the there are certain the number of level of the measurement of the dew point in the purification state at the. Uh, so any drying of, unit is there? Oh. Yeah, unit is there. Purification. We have a, high, a huge, a big uh, purification unit is there. Uh, to uh, the purify the gas and after that pressure drop will be occurred but uh, after the below 10 ppm we go for purification liquefaction in the cold box okay 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 okay, okay, okay thank you now our next presentation thank will you, be sir. by tripti bansod from rr cat indore and her 
पोस्टर आईडी इज वन टू वन जीरो नव ओवर टू तृप्ति ओके फाइन गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय प्रेजेंटेशन इज ऑन द टाइटेनियम जिटकोनियम वैनेडियम फिल्म डिपोजिशन इन लो कंडक्टेंस चैम्बर यूजिंग ऑर्गन एंड क्रिप्टॉन स्पटरिंग गैसेस देयर वैक्यूम एंड सरफेस कैरेक्टराइजेशन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड ओके सर कैन आई शेयर फोर स्लाइड्स हियर इज द ट्वेंटी स्लाइड्स यो गो हेड यू हैव टू कंप्लीट विद इन 3 मिनट्स सो वो टेम्पलेट दिया ओके ओके सर वी आर चेंजिंग फ्रॉम हियर यू हैव टू कंप्लीट विद इन 3 3 मिनट्स सो जस्ट गो बाय योर ओके ओके सर सो सर नैग नैग इज द एलिमेंट which can be widely used to sputter the uh, uh, sputter inside the vacuum chamber and it provides uh, gas molecules pumping on their active surface so nac thin film is deposited to pump the low conductance uhv chamber of the accelerator so here we have deposited two aluminum chamber uh, using the getter alloy titanium zirconium vanadium inside the aluminum pipe via the uh, dc magnetron sputtering system Uh, here we have investigated the influence of the sputtering gases on the vacuum performance of the neck coated chamber so uh, i here i will describe about the neck thin film deposition using the different sputtering gases film thickness composition adhesion crystalline structure and vacuum performance of the neck coated chamber here i will give the short introduction about the industuring it is operating at uh, 200 milliampere at the rate of 2.5 gv and at this parameter operating pressure is 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 millibar in industu three undulator chambers were installed its uh, dimension is uh, 17 mm by 81 mm cross section and length is 2.7 meter so uh, it's a, uh, it is a low conductance chamber so it is not possible to pump the system by the conventional pumping like sip and tsp so this uh, chamber undulator chamber is neck deposited uh here i have shown the dc magnetron sputtering system which was developed in house and uh, this uh, there is a solenoid orange color cylinder is solenoid of 600 mm length inside this we have put 400 mm length uh, aluminum chamber and this aluminum chamber cross section is shown in the figure and uh, we can see the target is uh, two targets we have used because uh, to get the uniform neck coating and the uh, distance between the target and the substrate is 7 mm which is very small so we have used the 350 gauss magnetic field and uh, both the chambers were deposited at the same discharge current 100 milliampere and uh, one is deposited using the argon sputtered gas at a pressure of 2.7 into minus 2 millibar whereas the krypton sputtered chamber uh, were deposited at 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 millibar krypton pressure so after Madam, your time uh, is over now oh, now let us open for questions oh. okay thank you for the talk uh but uh, where you actually informed that uh, you will have to use the logo in your slide yes sir actually uh, there was a, uh, my ship duty in uh, in this operation so i have very little time and uh, it was not possible so uh, okay sorry sir why why are you using a dc magnetron uh actually sir uh, the pole gap uh, 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 aluminum chamber cross section is very low so distance between the substrand and uh, uh, target is small so we have to produce the discharge uh, we have to apply the magnetic field okay okay tripti thank you and now we have to move to the next presentation and our next presentation will be from prabhat ranjan and his poster id is 1217 over to prabhat ranjan mr prabhat are you here mr prabhat are you online so i think he is uh, not available online so we have to move to the next presentation by sonali parashat brc mumbai and her poster id is 1218 sonali you are having 
three minutes for presentation and one minute for oral uh, for question answers. Uh, okay, you are to start now. Uh, my this presentation is on design of a RF window for industrial Linux. Uh, next slide. Uh, RF window plays a very crucial role in any accelerator. Actually, it uh, acts as a barrier between ultra high vacuum side and uh, uh, pressurized plumb line. And uh, uh, it is transparent to microwave. So it is a very crucial component and indigenous development of this component is a very important uh, part. We are uh, working in uh, 2.856 gigahertz uh, as band Linux. Uh, so for this, we are working on pillbox type RF windows. So why we have chosen pillbox type RF window is that uh, the basic advantage is uh, easier impedance matching as well as a broad frequency response by adjusting the dimension of the window. Next slide. So uh, uh, while choosing, while designing a window, uh, what are the main uh, uh, properties which we should uh, uh, keep in our mind? Basically, uh, we are designing a window where we should get low RF dissipation, low RF reflection, and vacuum tight seal. And for this, the uh, main uh, component is the ceramic. The ceramic, uh, choosing ceramic, uh, there comes a merit factor, which is uh, actually uh, dispersion loss divided by conductivity. The higher the thermal conductivity of the uh, alumina, uh, aluminum uh, material, as well as um, the lower tan delta losses, as well as uh, higher bulk uh, resistivity. These three uh, parameters, as well as uh, lower uh, epsilon values, uh, relative permeability, which will give uh, low dissipation losses. So, uh, 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 most widely used uh, material is alumina. Next slide. Uh, so, here, while doing the analysis, what we have done is I have taken a circular pillbox window, a circular pillbox cavity, and uh, along the two sides, there, there are a WR284 waveguide. The dimension of the waveguide is 72.16 mm cross 34.04 mm. Uh, so, we have done impedance matching, and from that, we have calculated uh, all the dimensions of uh, the circular pillbox cavity as well as uh, uh, the length of the cavity and uh, uh, the waveguide dimensions. Uh, so, here, what I have shown is uh, that um, at we have got insertion loss of minus 52.7 dB, uh, uh, sorry, return loss of minus 52.7 dB and insertion loss of uh, 0.03 dB. Uh, and uh, uh, next slide. Uh, we also made comparison between two kind of uh, window, a symmetric and asymmetric one. Asymmetric kind of window is used in Clystron, uh, while uh, symmetric kind of window is used uh, between... So, Nari, yeah. your time is over now. Uh -huh. Now, session is open for question from the judges. Tell me in the ceramic window thickness, you have not mentioned this somewhere. It is, uh, sir, th 3. Si uh, 6 mm. We have taken it 3.6 mm. So, is, I mean, why have you chosen this particular thickness, 3.6 mm, by this uh, checking the parameters you have mentioned? Sir, actually, uh, while doing the simulation, we use, uh, we, I have taken 3, 3.5, 3.6, and uh, uh, actually, we used to see that if there are any ghost mode inside that particular band. So, while changing the uh, thickness of the ceramic, we usually check that if there is any ghost mode coupled to that particular window or not. So, uh, and that, and that to availability. So, with this particular kind of thickness, we are getting the best optimized result of uh, return and insertion losses and uh, as well as availability. So, we have chosen that. Okay. The ceramic that you are talking about, is that available in India indigenously? Mm. Sir, uh, ceramic, uh, sir... Uh, Ceramics, sir, uh, this I don't know, uh, but yes, I know it is readily available to purchase uh, AL203 as well as there are other ceramic like Sapphire, BO. No, it is the major thing and if it is imported from uh, outside, then where is the cost saving? Uh, actually, sir, uh, uh, the whole, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, window is costing like uh, 12 lakhs and we are like... Uh, that is true. 
but if the ceramic that you import that will cost more okay uh, okay thank you okay okay, okay. thank you sonali for yeah. this presentation now we have to move to the next presentation by mr tarang garg from crc mumbai and his poster id number is 1220 good afternoon chair okay go ahead go ahead uh, good afternoon chair sir i am here good to afternoon. present my I am here to present my results on the computational fluid dynamics study of lutetium evaporation under electron beam. Uh, next, so lutetium 177 is a isotope which is being studied for the TRT targeted radio isotope therapy for cancer treatment. Now, why it is so? Because it has an average kinetic energy of it, it emits a beta particle of average kinetic energy of 133 keV, which is a very uh suitable half life of 6.71 days so uh, how this uh, isotope is produced this isotope is produced by uh, through, uh by uh, by bombarding it with neutron absorption in a reactor of lutetium 176 so lutetium 176 is put in a reactor and is bombarded with neutron which convert gets converted into lutetium 177 now to get lutetium 176 we have to enrich the natural natural lutetium from natural uh, we have to enrich the percentage of lutetium 176 from natural percentage of 2.5 percent to more than 65 or 70 percent. So uh, this we will be doing through the process of laser isotope separation. Now in laser isotope separation, we have to generate a vapor stream of a uh, required of a of a uh, we have to generate a vapor stream. Now that vapor stream will be generated from the source at a temperature of 2300 degree Kelvin. Now in this 20, for generating a vapor at 2300 degree Kelvin. We will use uh, electron beam can also be used is a well known evaporation process in and which will be carried out in high vacuum. Now in the electron beam evaporation. Surface tension. Surface tension force plays an important role as a, in the form of Marangoni convection. Now we can see in the figure that we have a liquid pool. We have an electron beam striking from the top and at the top surface due to temperature difference. The uh, surface tension reduces at the center due to high temperature to the edge which is at just at the melting point. So the uh, surface tension force causes the liquid to flow from the center to the outwards and thus sets up the Marangoni convection. Now, many numerical studies have been carried out in literature, but mostly they are in laminar in by most, but mostly they have considered laminar model. In some cases they have matched with the uh, pool width after the post post solidification pool width, pool width and pool size. But uh, they have found that there is a considerable difference and to explain that considerable difference, they have gone for the turbulence modeling and through the turbulence modeling. What they have done is through turbulence modeling, they have increased the effective uh, momentum diffusivity and momentum uh, and thermal conduct thermal diffusivity so, uh, in the previous slide only. Now, what is important is determination of critical bifurc bifurcation parameter. The critical bifurc bifurcation parameter is it's, it's nothing but just a like Reynolds number or we can say the Prandtl number. So in this case, the critical determination of critical bi bifurcation parameter is important. Now, one attempt has been made by uh, DR Ethe in 1960s and he said that, OK, we can say that uh, critical Reynolds of 600 can be used. But other than that, for so the Mr. Current, time is very... over now. Now session is open for question from the judges. So in the next slide, I have used yeah. the governing equation, these things to simulate the your time is model up. in your, your time is over. Tarang. No, I saw from your abstract that your experimental evaporation rate, that rate mm -hmm. that depends upon the type of floor, whether it is laminar or turbulent. Whatever yes, you sir. have observed from your setup, it is in conformity with which kind of flow? Sir, uh, we have it is. We have not done the experiments on the lutetium, but okay. uh, we have done some earlier experiments and we have found that the flow largely remains between the laminar and turbulent. It is it is really not we are not it is not able to uh, determine that whether the flow is in turbulent purely turbulent region or purely laminar region. It keeps on fluctuating between it remains in the transition region basically. If I try to calculate the uh, critical Reynolds number in our case. Well, in our earlier case, and in this case also, it was coming out to be something of 450. So what it is, was what is the significance in... of this Reynolds number? Can you just explain? Sir, uh, the Reynolds number is just a it, it's a parameter which tells us what is the 
amount of the what is the ratio of the viscous force to the inertial force convection force convection force basically so if the reynolds number is very very high it means that the viscous forces are not very much dominant and the flow is more largely moving through the advection flow so the advection flow is is mathematically advection okay. flow is highly okay okay, okay mr taran uh, thank you for nice presentation now we have to move to the next presentation by mr armanna from iit bhu and his poster id is 1221 over to mr armanna okay so yeah so good afternoon to everybody today i'll discuss about the effect of electro pulsing on bulk nanostructure steel next slide please yeah so i'll give the introduction objective materials preparation electro pulsing characterization and at the end give summary next slide please bulk this uh, electro pulsing can be used for grain refinement low defect density reduced residual stress accelerated restoration kinetics and specially accelerated transformation kinetics next slide please bulk nanostructure benetic steel developed by professor hk d h bagesia in university of cambridge now here the material is having quite very good mechanical properties but uh, the transformation kinetics is very low so the objective yeah please next slide yeah yeah so we have taken the objective to accelerate this benite transformation kinetics and to see the stability of this benite as well as return austenite under electropulsing condition next slide please we have made the material by um, vacuum induction melting uh, homogenized and then austenitized the material then we have taken in sol bath at 250 degree centigrade kept for 48 hours and we got see uh, this uh, whatever composition that is having martensite start temperature of minus 8.2 degree centigrade so yeah next slide please now this material another set of material this thermal isothermal benite whatever we have got that is electro pulsed at 14 elect kilovolt elect 14 kv and current density of 8.8 kilo ampere per millimeter square with a frequency of 15 hertz and discharge current time of 511 microsecond next slide please yeah so if we see uh, sorry some uh, disturbance is there in that so whatever isothermal benite we have got uh, this first one is the optical microstructure then in acm microstructure so we can see there are some blocky austenite in the isothermal transformation condition okay but there was no carbide now after electro pulsing one we have seen this blocky austenite got reduced and overall austenite overall benite quantity got increased but there is some decomposition of this austenite as well as benite very minor amount of fine carbide particles are there and when we have continued this pulsing we have seen that uh, this Um, the amount of benite almost remains same microstructure is stabilized however some part of this uh, carbide fine carbide whatever has formed got dissolved next slide please so by uh, x ray diffraction we have confirmed that by uh, electro pulsing uh, the by isothermal transformation we have got only austenite written austenite and benite about 55% benite and 45% written austenite after pulsing on the written austenite got reduced we can see the benite quantity got increased to about 70% now we could not detect in x ray the uh, the presence of this uh, mr mr manna your time is over now now okay. let us have a questions from the judges and online participants yeah please what was the magnitude of the voltage pulse yeah 14 uh, 14 uh, kilo volt did you vary that also no i have taken in that uh, fixed value okay so about 211 kilo ampere current was passing through so about 8.8 kilo ampere per millimeter square current was passing through okay. yeah so no. this is the peak current current will be varying with time hello yeah heat effect or 
heating effect actually there there is a minor amount of heating this heating temperature is quite low so mm. the non heating aspect thermal aspect is driving this transformation um, more okay so thermal is not there a thermal is there yeah thermal part is actually driving thermal part but it is see we have already taken we have already treated this material at 250 by calculation mm. we have seen that uh, the temperature can rise by this pulsing way about mm. 200 to 250 degrees centigrade. Uh, so 200 to this yeah. the specific heat of the material you are eating. Uh, specific heat I didn't remember. Of, of course, uh, uh, right now I didn't remember. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mannaji. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I think uh, Mr. Prabhat Ranjan is online. Oh. Our next speaker will be from Mr. Prabhat Ranjan. His poster ID is 1217. Over to Mr. Prabhat. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my presentation is uh, Mechanical Analysis uh, of Impeller Blade for Turbo Molecular Pump, actually. So, uh, we are uh, uh, first making indigenous turbo molecular pump in BRC. So here in uh, terminal molecule, it works on mechanical kinetic vacuum pump. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, to achieve this thing, uh, we need to have a very narrow clearance that is less than 0.5 millimeter between a stator and rotor of the blade. And blade has to speed, speed, uh, has to run with very high speed that is more than 30,000 RPM. And uh, the last criteria is that blade has to be as thin as possible and it has to be cantilever structure so that uh, we can get as much as uh, 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 this uh, pumping is pumping speed as well as compression ratio actually. So uh, by maintaining this thing, the moment we increase the temp uh, speed, the blade gets broken actually. That you can see in uh, right side that uh, bottom picture, uh, blade it, it simply gets broken. So uh, to avoid this thing, researchers are de developing a high strength material of aluminium alloy. Uh, so in in our division, what we have taken, we have taken a step how to optimize the blade structure so that with the same commercial uh, material, we can uh, start building the turbomolecular pump actually. So uh, next, next slide, please. N next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, uh, before going further, uh, we have, uh, we did fine element analysis of the present uh, turbomolecular blade actually. So here you can see uh, the uh, right side uh, figures. Uh, actually, in TMP, there will be uh, 12, uh, 12 stages of compression. So I have taken one stage and each stage will have around 50 blades actually. So uh, for FES simulation, we took only one blade and the boundary condition we set in periodic manner so that the all blades can be simulated together. And uh, to uh, uh, incorporate the centrifugal force of uh, this thing as a rotational speed, we have put an equation of rho omega square r. And the left side, you can see the material, what material we have used for FES simulation because these material we are going to fabricate actual sample. Uh, next slide, please. This is the tensile stress what we uh, got from the FES simulation. So here you can see uh, uh, at the right side, the near the uh, base of the blade or between base and bulk of the material, there will be a huge jump of the uh, tensile stress and it, uh, this basically it is happening due to the stress concentration and it uh, it leads to the uh, blade break, uh, 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 blade uh, failure once we go for high speed next slide please so to avoid uh, avoid that stress concentration what we did we have tried to provide smooth geometry instead of uh, thin uh, uh, blade structure to bulk structure we have put a fillet and fillet size was varied so you can see the right side uh, second photograph there we have varied the fillet size from point, uh, uh, point 0.1 to 1 millimeter and it was found that at 0.6 millimeter we are getting mu much lesser uh, peak tensile stress that is uh, reduced from 750 megapascal to 190 megapascal and Mr. Prabhat, this, uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah, Prabhat so, your time is over now so pardon? now let us move for the your time is over now okay okay let us move for the question answer session thank yeah, you yeah. Mr. Prabhat Ranjan this is a good piece of work that you have done. Uh, you are telling uh, that there is a transition from bulk material to thin material in the blade, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, where is this transition exactly? Where does it occur? 
See, actually, what happens? What you call bulk the... material and what you call thin material? Yeah, bulk material. Uh, is, uh, actually, it, uh, bulk material it is a solid structure, and the uh, the thin material is the blade, which is protruding cantilever way outside. Actually, you can see in uh, this uh, slide itself the last uh, photograph. You can see the blades are extruding outside. So that blades are thin material. And the inside cylindrical portion that is bulk material. So what happens, sir? When uh, it is exposed for centrifugal force due to rotation, the stress line generated from the blade to the bulk material. But what happens at the bulk material? It will have very high space to flow the stress line. But uh, the moment uh, okay. the stress line coming from bulk material to thin material at the junction, okay, okay. there will be suddenly narrow passage actually. Okay. Another question. Similar. You have tested it at. Uh, Thirty thousand RPM. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, turbo molecular pumps, I think, work above this also. No, you go correct. up to ninety thousand RPM as well. What will you do? Yeah, for yeah. Actually, it, it depends what diameter you are looking for. Actually, what diameter? And if you go for higher LPS, higher uh, this thing uh, uh, capacity of the turbo molecular pump, they are designed for high uh, diameter. So that uh, doesn't go uh, more than I think that doesn't go more than thirty-five thousand RPM actually. So, uh, if you we'll go for thousand LPS, it it is limited up to thirty seven R thirty seven thousand RPM only. But if you we'll go for lower LPS like eighty LPS, it goes up to eighty or uh, uh, seventy five RPM seventy five thousand RPM because their diameter okay, is okay. less. So you can run for how much time you have tested this this thirty thousand RPM yeah. running? How much time you have tested this? It? Yeah, this we have tested one week actually and one week continuously, and it was it was not broken at all actually. Okay, and now we 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 have uh, built one TMP and it was deployed okay. to within B B R C. But uh, for safe side, we have set up at twenty four thousand RPM is the working condition. But maximum it can go up to three thousand. Okay. So in that case, it is uh, still running. And last full week it was running in uh, at user okay. side. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, thank you. And thank you. Uh, with this, let us conclude this session. And thanks to the other participants and special thanks to the judges, uh, Sri. Yes, an Acharya sir and uh, Dr. Lalit Vashne sir, and uh, on the behalf of the organizing committee, I am having uh, some small gift for the judges. Please accept, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Dharan.